Thanks for checking out Hemlock Mountain Outdoors. I'm Kurt, and in this video, we're going to take a look at cinch buckle suspension safety. Cinch buckle suspensions are probably one of the most common, easiest, and least expensive ways to effectively hang your hammock. They are so commonplace, so that I think a lot of times it's easy to forget that there is a proper way of setting up your suspension. So we're going to talk about that in this video. Also, I just want to talk a little bit about some basic hammock safety when you're setting up, just so that you have a nice, enjoyable, and safe night in your hammock. If you are looking at upgrading your current hammock to cinch buckle suspension, even if it's not one of my suspensions or one of my hammocks, this video will uh, pertain to you too. Cinch buckle suspensions are very interchangeable throughout different hammocks. So what I use for my cinch buckles are these. These are Dutchware's version of the cinch buckles. These are aluminum. They are a metal frame with a sliding adjuster bar in the middle. I'll also occasionally use these, which are based on the same style. These ones are um, actually designed for military parachute adjusters. So that's where that basic design comes from. You may also see some, it's kind of hard to do because I'm using the cinch buckles. Imagine these little bars aren't here. You may just see two metal plates that kind of float over each other. They're not attached at all. And they just kind of adjust. You put your, your buckle inside there. There's different varying uh, versions of cinch buckles. Sometimes they're just loops too. But the concept is the same. So that's what I'm talking about when I'm mentioning cinch buckle suspensions. And then you use a piece of well, I've already got one on there. A piece of nylon webbing that you feed through. So we'll talk about all that in a second. So first, let's take a look at some basic hammock safety. Um, there are a few things I do. You're going to set up your hammock the way you want to set up your hammock. But this is general ideas, general advice to help your hammock last longer. Uh, the first thing I do is when I'm setting up my hammock, I try to ensure it doesn't touch the ground. Now this isn't because I don't want it to get dirty, but there could be um, sharp rocks, there could be glass, there could be prickers, there could be any number of things on the ground that can snag the fabric and put stress on the fabric. So I try to avoid that as much as possible. So as I'm hanging my hammock, I try to, if I, I think it's gonna touch the ground, I'll actually hang it over my shoulders. I'm walking to the next strap. I'll show you. So I'll set up the from the bottom of the bag first, and I'll pop open my bag, pull the hammock out, have the cinch rock in my hand, and just kind of run it over my shoulder, so that way I know it's not going to touch the ground. And then I can adjust it from there. So one of the first things I, I then do is open up my hammock. And it's kind of subconscious, and I don't even realize I do it. But I just kind of do a real quick look at the hammock body. Make sure I don't see any holes or damage to the body of the hammock. Once I have the hammock set up, I make sure I have nothing sharp in my pockets or hanging from my belt. I take my keys out. I make sure if I have a knife on me, I take that out. I take my phone out. I place that in my uh, ridgeline organizer or on my pack next to the hammock. And then I never put my shoes... Never leave my shoes on my feet when I get in a hammock. So the reason for this is, even like jeans, I, I won't wear jeans because the rivets can actually cause pressure on the hammock. So you may not rip the hammock immediately if you got something like your keys in your pocket or rivets on your pants or your shoes on. But those hard edges, those sharp edges can actually damage the fabric and over time will cause wear and tear and cause the fabric to fail. That's never good. You may have heard the term, never hang your hammock higher than you're willing to fall. Also, as you're thinking that, as you're setting up your hammock, look underneath it and think, do I really want to land on that? Because usually the answer is no. So don't set up over rocks or sharp sticks or um, a, a little chasm underneath you because it makes a great Instagram shot. Yeah, it might look cool, but if you have a failure, you really got to think about what's under you because if you fall, um, it's that sudden stop at the end that's going to really hurt you. So that's just basic 
hammock setup safety, right? Make sure your gear is in good shape. It's like if you use tools. I was a contractor for most of my life uh, in the telecommunications industry. And I know that before you start doing anything, you always make sure your tools are working. You always check your ladders. You check your your drill bits, your saws, everything. You make sure it's all in working order. Uh, same thing with, with backpacking gear. You want to make sure that your, your hammock is in working order, your suspension is in working order, that your gear is working and proper because you don't want to have a failure if you can at all avoid it while you're out. So next, let's talk about the cinch buckles because, like I said, I think they're so commonplace that people forget there is kind of a, a proper way. And I, um, doing what I just did, I didn't check something very important, which I should have. And that's how easy it is to forget. When you are setting up your, your suspension, your cinch buckles, there's a couple things you want to check. You want to make sure that however your AM steel is connected to the buckle, that it's allowing the buckle to stay perpendicular to the continuous loop. So if I only had one loop around this, um, let me show you on a piece that's not already connected. All right, so if this is your cinch buckle and you've got your continuous loops, or you just have a piece of AM steel, let's say you're gonna make your own, you're gonna mount your own cinch buckles. You don't wanna have something like this. You don't want it to look like this because that AM steel slides on here very easily, meaning that when pressure gets put on your hammock, it's going to pull your cinch buckle sideways. Right? You're going to be at an angle. I'm going to show you why that's really bad in a second. Um, so you want to make sure that your AM steel is covering as much of this bar as possible. So you can see on here that I've got this bar pretty much completely covered. And that's going to make sure that my weight is pulling from the center of the buckle and is keeping the buckle perpendicular to the AM steel. The reason for that is, see how that just went sideways? That's very, very bad. So when you set up your buckle, right, you put your, your webbing behind the bar on this style, right? So there's like this little jaw right here and then this side is smooth. You go behind the smooth side and then when you come back, you go, you push this bar back and you go up in front of that jaw. It's hard to do watching it on the camera. And you create this bite. It's very important to make sure when you create that bite that this bar stays square in that buckle. If it angles at all, it can actually slide and it will destroy this webbing. It will just tear it up. Now this webbing, let's talk about the webbing for a second. This is a partial roll of the webbing that I get. I get it in continuous 300 foot sections and it is rated at 1500 pounds breaking strength. So it can hold 1500 pounds before it, sh before it should break. Now wear and tear and use and other circumstances can make that lower. And that's why for a safety rating, like you would do with climbing gear or any kind of life sustaining gear, we use a 10% rating. So this is 1500 pounds per strap. I rate it at 150 pounds per strap, 10% of what its maximum is. So if you're, if you want heavy, <clears throat> excuse me, if you want heavier duty straps, I do have 3000 pound webbing. I actually have some 6,600 pound webbing too. If you really want to go uh, super, <laughs> super strong, it's really, really uh, a lot thicker than this though. But the, the webbing is really strong. It's actually designed for the tie downs on like cargo ships and tractor trailers. It's also very similar to what you would use uh, in hurricane proofing roofs down in the south and um, holding down trailers, mobile homes in tornado zones. This stuff is really, really strong. But if it gets torn, if it gets torn, it can actually uh, just kind of disintegrate. And I'll put up some pictures of what that looks like. Um, it's not it's not good. And then what happens is you just go plummeting to the ground. 
So, you want to make sure, like I said, that when you, when you put pressure on this, if your webbing is at all off, even that much, you might have a problem. So you want to make sure your webbing is square with itself, and you want to put a little pressure on to lock it in. And when you get in the first time, don't just jump in. You want to ease the weight onto it, and it sets this all in place. I know a lot of people like to do like a, a, a hitch just to keep the suspension let me get up on here. So they want to do like a kind of like a thing they call a slippery hitch and bring it through to keep the buckle from sliding. But when you do that, you can actually knock your, your webbing sideways and actually cause more problem. If the buckle is working properly, it shouldn't slip. So if you're using that slippery hitch as a water break for, for rain, just tie a piece of string to the, the webbing and it'll act the same. If you're setting up your buckles correctly, they shouldn't slip. If you've got them locked in perpendicular and the webbing is square to itself, you lock it down, you've got your tension from your hammock in the center of your buckle, you should have no problems. If any of this gets offset, right, the the buckle will lock at a weird position, and I'm not going to do it to this this webbing because I don't want to destroy it. But when you put weight in there, it might not happen immediately, but it's going to start to slide, and where it's pinching will grab into the webbing, and it'll start to pull it and cut it, separate it, and as soon as it goes to a certain point, it's just going to let go, and it's going to snap. So I got a hammock back um, because there was seam tear uh, on, the, on the hammock and I thought it's a weird spot. It was up here near the, the end caps and there's not really a lot of pressure put in that spot and I was trying to figure out how that happened. So I, I reached out to the customer and said, so what, what happened? Something else happened because so I'm seeing some um, stress in the fabrics and the customer got back to me and said, oh, it's nothing, nothing happened. Everything was normal. Oh, except for the time it fell. And she sent me pictures of the of the tree straps, and yeah, so the the hammock started to slide, the webbing grabbed real quick, and then it it kind of burst and dropped. This is what I'm assuming happened, but that tension where it grabbed put so much stress on the hammock it actually blew out the seams, and then it put all kinds of stress in the hammock. So I'm going to replace the hammock for the customer, um, but yeah, that could have been a lot worse than it was, but it, it did all kinds of damage to the hammock just because the cinch buckle um, actually failed and tried to grab itself. And then that's what it looks like because it stressed the, the mesh, it stressed the fabric, and it popped seams somewhere where there shouldn't be any pressure. So it was really, really bizarre. So yeah, just be very cautious as you're setting up your cinch buckles. Put weight on it, make sure everything's nice and square. Do that at both ends. And if you do that, you really shouldn't have any problems. So. Again, if this is for a Hemlock Mountain Outdoors hammock or another hammock that you own that you've got cinch buckles, you're upgrading cinch buckles too. This is really good. I, I probably shouldn't have the polka dot um, background behind there. That's keeping in my AC. <laughs> this is an open door, so I apologize for that. Um, got something white in the behind that? There we go. <laughs> little apex. Um, yeah, so make sure it's... I mean, naturally, it's going to want to fall down to the side. But you can see that it's the bar is square <clears throat> against the frame of the buckle. And that is the most important part. That everything in there is square as you put your weight on it. I um, was out camping with, a, with some friends a couple weeks ago. Um, and somebody got in their hammock and it made a really weird sound. In the morning, as we're breaking down... Its buckles weren't set right and actually put a little tear in it so that was a weird sound we heard so it can happen doesn't matter um doesn't matter doesn't matter who you are how often you do it you set up real quick you don't think about that and all of a sudden phew, you got a tear and the cinch buckles are so simple that it's not not something that you really think about that would need extra uh, attention so now that i i set up most times i I double check and I don't even realize I'm doing it because this is a very quick process. Let's look at it, make sure it's all good. Just kind of tighten it down and then move on. 
So I hope this helped you. Um, if you like this red hammock, this is a red poppy red coyote pack. This is currently available. This is a made to order hammock. I had the red fabric. I made it. It's very nice. No shipping times or no, no lead times, just shipping times, but no lead times. So if you're looking for a hammock, come over and check this out. Maybe it's still available. Thanks for checking out Hammock Mountain Doors. Hang safe. See you on the trail.